Welcome to another episode of Arizona Real Estate Showcase. I'm your host, Jason Grandin, with the Grandin Group, Arizona's number one brother and sister real estate team in Arizona, now serving the beautiful part of Arizona, everything north, of course, Maricopa County, but everything north of um, Anthem. We've got a couple great agents. I want to shout out to Cody Wolcott, who's one of our agents on our team. And he's been doing phenomenal up in Corn Valley, New River, the whole Verde Valley area. So a special shout out to all our friends up in Prescott, Verde Valley, Cornville, New River, Black Canyon City, and Flagstaff, Sedona, all those other fun areas. You know what? We love it out there. And one of the uh, we're, we're preparing to get a actually a brick and mortar shop. We're working on that right now, and uh, we are currently recruiting new agents that are going to be full time agents for your full time life. One of the biggest reasons we decided to uh, go ahead and start with uh, Prescott Valley and uh, kind of northern Arizona is, it, from our experience, there's some good realtors, so don't take this the wrong way, all of you, but there are some that are just absolutely should not be in this business. Again, you guys have been listening to us long enough, and for you new listeners, the Grannon Group, um, one of the things we pride ourselves on is customer service and being full-time, which means we work weekends, we work evenings, we work holidays. We know that buying a house or even selling a house is one of life's most important decisions, so we're going to be there for you every step of the way. The agents we hire are going to be like this. They're not going to be the type that won't show houses on the weekends, won't return your calls in the evenings, and so forth. We've had some experiences with agents up there. Um, And, uh, well, it's Sunday, and I'm not showing a house, or you can't get into it. Hey, you know what? That is unacceptable. I, I like the feel of the small town. I like it being kicked back and stuff. But the fact of the matter is, not in this industry. We need to keep this going. So um, the Granite Group will be opening a Platinum Living Realty office. Uh, like I said, we're looking for locations. So if you know of a good location down there, let us know. But we're going to be opening up, and we're going to have uh, we're going to take the town by storm. It's going to be a great group of guys and girls that are working selling real estate for you, all full time. Always available, getting you top dollar for your house. And for those of you that are buying, we're going to make sure you get in some of the best areas. Because as you know, or you'll soon find out, every area has a different personality no matter where you're at. Some people call and they're like, hey, you know what? I just want to go home. I want to be left alone. Well, maybe a condo is not your style. Um, Maybe you want a uh, place where there tends to be more land or something to that effect. So anyways, Grandin Group, like us on Facebook. We can certainly help you out. And uh, today's um, show, we, we're going to get into a few things here. I, first of all, I hope everyone's doing fine with this coronavirus. Um, everyone has an opinion on it. And again, we try to stay non-political. So, you, you know, we value your opinion on it and stuff. We have our opinion on it, but we're not going to necessarily get into that. We are going to talk about a couple different things today. Today, we're going to talk about being a landlord. And we're going to talk about fake news that is spread by our fellow realtors. And man, I'll tell you what, there are some of these guys that do this and it's just like nonstop. So first of all, before we get into the uh, fake news spread by realtors, let's talk about being a landlord, okay? So it's a, it's a great time to buy a house. It, it, it's always uh, better to own if you can. But um, if you're going to rent, then, um, from the, then this is from the rental side. From the uh, tenant side, you've got to have a good landlord. Now, what makes a good landlord? That's that's always kind of questionable. My idea of a good landlord is somebody that you never see, you pay your rent to. If something breaks and are on it, perfect it's a perfect situation. Uh, I'm not a big fan of becoming friends with uh, the tenants of the landlords just because things go south. So there's horror stories out there. Um, we we bought a house that's probably close to 15 years ago. And we bought it over in a, in a community, Desert Ridge, which is an incredible community right there off the 101 and Tatum. If you guys are looking, there are some great homes, and it's still a popular as ever area. So anyways, uh, Amy and I, we buy a house over there uh, 15 years ago uh, when the market was kind of crashing. It was a great deal. So we buy it, and we're like, okay, what are we going to do with it? So uh, a friend who worked with us, uh, they worked in an office upstairs where we had our office, said her and her fiancé needed a house. So we're like, perfect. So we, uh, you know, talked to them, let them move in. Next day, they filed bankruptcy. Now, if someone moves into your house and files bankruptcy, you cannot touch them until that bankruptcy is done. So needless to say, six months, we had to cover that mortgage. 
why they lived in the house and they took off and never seen again. And then you really can't collect because they name you in the bankruptcy. So, you, you know, you want to make sure you address those issues when you sign a lease. Now, as far as being a landlord, so there's a lot of people that buy a house and they think, okay, I'm going to rent it out. I'm going to be a landlord. And it, it honestly does. So currently, we, I have an acquaintance of mine, a friend of mine. He bought a house. We, I've rented it out for him twice. Both times have been good tenants. But what he demands is somebody that doesn't ask anything. They just He wants them to move in, pay rent, and doesn't want to deal with them at all. Not necessarily the best way to go because everybody's got different personalities. And the fact is, is that when you're spending you know, $1,500, two grand, even $800 a month on a rental house for a year or two, you want to make it your home. That's what the tenant demands. Tenants want to make sure that, hey, I'm going to be paying this top dollar for your house. May I paint the house in the inside or do this? Landlord? No, I don't want you to paint it. Okay. Um, can I hang pictures? No. Yes. And yes, you can, by the way. The deal is you have to return the house back to normal or the same way as when you took it over. So anyways, this particular guy um, met the uh, tenant that was going to move in, and he didn't like the question she asked, and she was just had too aggressive of a personality. So... Landlords demand different things. And so from the landlord aspect, a landlord's ideal tenant is someone who pays, doesn't bug them, and you move on. From the tenant side, ideal is you pay. They probably want everything done, broken light bulbs. So you have to address those issues, and there's a fine line on being that. So before those of you, you know, we'll get calls to, not to change subjects like this, but we'll get calls from some kids who are like, hey, listen, my grandparents just passed away. They left me a couple million bucks. I want to buy five or six rental properties. You know what? And I personally tell them, do not do it. Being a landlord, without a doubt, is a full-time job. If you're not going to use a property management company, which is another subject we've discussed in some of the past episodes, but um, if you're going to do it yourself, it is a full-time job. There's things you have to take care of. Just because it says... um, you know, you take care of the bug treatment. The fact is, if your house gets termites, that's not covered under some of the issues with the house. So you have to be able to take care of it. And then some land, some tenants will call you when there's uh, like a little drip, uh, light bulbs out, their kids stuff something in the toilet, but it's not their fault and so forth. So these are just items that need to be addressed if you're going to be a landlord. And, uh, and being a landlord is a tough job. You have to put up with different personalities. And uh, we've even had landlords in the past that want to become friends with their tenants. And then the tenants don't pay and so forth. The other crucial thing is never, 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 never change the terms of that contract. If you've got a contract in place and your tenant calls you up on the second of the month and says, hey, I'm going to be a week late on rent. Is that all right? And you're like, oh, okay, that's fine. My advice is you stick to what's in that contract. There's late fees and all this other stuff. Once you start changing the contract and this becomes a pattern, it makes it very difficult in the court of law. You start hanging out with these people, and, um, and hey, the runners are great people, by the way. They're very good. But when you start hanging out, becoming friends, it makes it more difficult to uh, see that fine line between a business relationship and a friendship. So I always recommend if you're a landlord – just rent the house out to a solid tenant that's going to pay you, and um, if you, and if you don't want to be bugged with them calling you, hire a property management company. Interview the property management company. There's a lot of property management companies out here, and there's a lot of them that are absolutely horrible. But for the most part, there are some really really good ones. And uh, from my experience, the good ones have been the licensed realtors who've been doing it a while. They know the rules, and there's a ton that goes into it. So kudos out to them. So if you decide you want to buy houses um, and, and become a landlord, make sure you call us up, the Grandin Group. We'll discuss it with you. It, it might not be your cup of tea. Again, it's not something you just jump into and move on. It is a full-time job. I've got uh, another client. He buys specifically uh, duplexes, triplexes, and fourplexes. And it's lower-income housing. And, uh, again, he's got a full-time job. He manages these himself, and it's nonstop. It's like another full-time job fixing roofs, air conditions, um, you know, little things here and there. And, you know, and quite honestly, for a normal person, when someone calls you and says, hey, Mr. Landlord, you know, can I do this or that or this is going to happen, it makes it really difficult for a lot of landlords to say, well, no, I'm not going to do it, or, yeah, go ahead and take care of it. 
you need to just keep everything separated, keep everything in order, keep separate accounts, don't mingle your money and all that fun stuff. So, anyway, so, so if you're thinking about buying some rental homes, uh, give us a call. We, we'll definitely make sure you get a great uh, gross uh, or a, a, grace ca- a great cap rate. So, um, you know, try not to buy something where you're only going to get 1% or 2%. We can find you stuff that's generating anywhere from like 8 to 10%. And, uh, we'll, and we'll make sure you get taken care of. And we'll find you a good tenant if you like. And a good property management because instantrenters.com does not do property management. So I <clears throat> hope you guys are doing great with this coronavirus. Uh, obviously, everybody has their, uh, you know, their opinion on whether or not it's for real. Uh, I do think it's for real. I do think we've been sold a bill of goods by our government and governors. And... Um, you know, but all those out there, you know, we want to make sure everyone's staying safe. Um, the numbers and stuff that are coming out now, I'm not sure it should have called for closing down the country. And then uh, we just had, before I get into the, um, the, the fake information spread by the realtors out here, uh, yesterday we had an article written by Lori Roberts with the Arizona, uh, Arizona Republic, Arizona Central, online. And she called people that were protesting to open up the state idiots. Now, this is the kind of stuff that cannot happen. As a realtor, I deal with a lot of quote-unquote idiots, but never would I get online or in a publication and call half my audience idiots. It's uncalled for. And so uh, shame on the Arizona Republic. Plus, the article was BS, and it was a little bit uh, biased. And, of course, um, fake news, So, which fake news, as you guys know, has become a uh, – Great word. It's been a new word that's going to be in our vocabulary forever, especially now if you don't like something, you call it fake news. So one of the things that we always want to champion in real estate is the fake news. And realtors are a number one source of putting out fake information. So there's a particular realtor out here. Um, He's also a friend of mine, so I don't want to uh, bash him too bad. But he does not like uh, our current president. It's fine, but everything he puts out is 100% negative. So he puts out um, this information about how real estate's affecting stuff in Flagstaff and this and that. And I got to tell you, the real estate market, yes, has uh, been affected, but have we slowed down? Our team hasn't. We've been busier than ever. Uh, the rental market is doing incredible. Sales market's doing good. There's still money out there. We've got some great lenders doing stuff. So when realtors send out information or they post it as if it's a end-all, be-all fact, you've got to really double-check it. I don't, I don't personally think it's right for us as realtors to send out scare tactic information to you as a consumer, whether you're buying or selling, because one, it screws everything up. Two, it gives us a bad name. And it's just not, it's just not right. You have an opinion on it. And if you're hiring a good realtor or a good team, they should be able to guide you through that. So we don't need to look online and see that this particular realtor or realtors went ahead and posted information as if they're the, uh, only ones. It, this is confident. I'm, you know, this information is what's going on, and we need to change this. It doesn't help the market. And then you get these other realtors that go on there and blatantly lie about what they do. Oh, I just sold a twenty million dollar home, and um, you know, and so now I've got to um, do this or that. It's absolutely crazy. It's ridiculous. It's important for you guys to interview your realtors. And call people out on this fake news. It's fine if you have an opinion, but there's a difference between having an opinion and pushing it out there and then having uh, an opinion, stating it as fact and pushing it out there and then sticking to it. And, uh, you know, every once in a while I try not to engage too much on some of that stuff because you're not going to change anyone's mind online. But um, every once in a while I have to fire. And on this particular in- instance, I had to fire on a couple people on it because the news was absolutely 100% fake and it's proven and the reason I know it's fake is because one of my clients happens to be a uh, nurse in Flagstaff and the information they put out that she gave me was correct or at least first hand and then um, the information they put out was a scare tactic and then they tied it into the real estate market how it's killing Flagstaff and it's not now with that said when you get into these college towns and stuff, yes, you might see a drop in rent uh, right now, especially for the past couple months. But the fact of the matter is, is that school's going to be opening again in the fall. Summer school's probably going to start as well. And the rental market in those areas is going to be hot. 
and and the housing market is still hot. I mean, Flagstaff is a incredible market. Sedona is an incredible market. Prescott is one of the fastest growing markets out here. So while we're going through this pandemic or whatever you want to call it, people are still buying, people are still selling. And another fact here, which was put out uh, by some of these same realtors, um, they were asked if um, it's a good time to list your house and sell it. Now, their response I did not like at all because, it again, wasn't based on fact. The fact of the matter is right now is a fantastic time to list your house. You can get in there. You get people that are actually looking. So you're narrowing out a lot of people that are not interested in real estate. You've got a lot of people looking, and it's a great time for your realtor, preferably the Grandin Group, to come up with a great marketing plan to get you top dollar for your house. So this way, when things do come up, you can get it sold hopefully now or uh, depending on the price point, but at least get a great marketing program out there. I've got to tell you, houses under 450000 right now, are selling and it's bidding wars, so it's a it's a good time to sell. Um, as I mentioned in last week's episode, rise of the discount broker, which by the way was one of our highest listened to podcasts. So I want to thank you for that. Uh, we uh, discussed how uh, discount brokers are not good for the real estate market. So the um, the the big thing is is that. I want to make sure with Arizona Real Estate Showcase that you guys are getting the information you need. I love the fact you send me emails, Twitter, and all that fun stuff, and I love answering your questions, and I personally call you back. So if you have questions, ask two or three people. Don't just assume because Fox News or CNN or one of the uh, networks, they're all biased whichever way you lean. They're all biased. So you know what? Ask a professional in your area. Don't call me and ask me about real estate in California because I don't know. Call a realtor in California. But if you call me or anyone on my team and you ask about real estate in Scottsdale, Cave Creek, Phoenix, Prescott, or anywhere in northern Arizona, absolutely we're going to tell you. And we'll document everything, and we're going to make sure you're taken care of. So, anyways, we don't want to go off on too much of a tangent today on that and stuff. The big thing is we want to make sure that you're very educated as to what it, become, what it takes to become a landlord. And um, like I said, it's, it's, a, it's another job. So don't think you're just going to buy a house from a realtor, put it up on the market, rent it, and collect money because generally you're one month away from going broke. If you have a rental place for $2,000 a month and your renter doesn't pay, that means you've got to come up with two grand, and it cuts into your income on that house really quick. So again, if you're going to get into that market, please discuss it with a realtor, discuss it with us. We own instantrenters.com, so we can at least get you taken care of. Um, and as far as fake news, you know what? It, it's... It, You know, how do you stop it? Everybody's got an opinion. I'm a person that agrees with free speech, and I think you should be able to say just about anything. But in this industry, um, when these realtors put out news articles written by someone, whether it's left or right, and it's it's just basic false information, and it's proven fake information, you've got to call them out. But this is why it's important to um, interview your agents before you do any sort of transactions with them. Okay, so anyway, so today's episode was what it takes to be a landlord and the rise of fake news by realtors. So, yeah, well, and then, of course, our friend over at Arizona Republic calling half the people idiots. Unbelievable and unacceptable. So we won't be dealing with that newspaper anytime soon. So anyways, hey, the market's great here in Arizona. If you guys are looking to purchase a house, uh, our team is ready for you. We'll send you full reports. We have access to things that are not on market. Brand new builds, foreclosures, bank-owned homes, which I kind of think we might see a little rise coming up on that. But under no way, shape, or form are you going to see a million-dollar house drop to seven hundred fifty thousand um, in a matter of a couple months. It's just not going to happen. And so, don't let the media or these fake news or the fake news realtors tell you that. Hey, wait a couple months. You're going to be able to buy this house for a million. You're going to be able to get it for seven hundred thousand. It's just not going to happen. We've got a strong market in Arizona. We got hundreds of people per day moving here from all over the country. We're one of the strongest economies in the country. So. Let's get us back open. Let's get some stuff sold. And um, like I said, we're working. We'll be safe with you. But the biggest thing is we want you to be safe, but it's important that you're happy, and it's important that your investment in real estate, whether you're buying or selling, is protected. The Grandin Group has that interest in mind. 
All right. Hey, it's been another uh, fun episode sitting here just kind of talking uh, to you guys. Again, I can't even begin to tell you how thankful I am for the amount of listeners we have. Text me, email me. Um, Twitter is Jason Grandin or Instant Renters, and Facebook is Jason H. Grandin. You can see our pictures up there. And, uh, hey, send us your stuff. Send us pictures of your house. We'll post whatever you put up there. Even if we don't agree with it, we'll still throw it up there. Hey, Oh, one other thing I wanted to send out before we sign off today. Um, to all our California buyers, you know what? You guys are great. I'm glad we're, we're getting a lot of California buyers. And uh, it's funny because everybody says, oh, they come here, they leave what they hate, and then they bring their nonsense with them. But I got to tell you, we've had a couple uh, Californians come here, <coughs> close on uh, some places, move in, and uh, they have um, integrated into our culture really great. In fact, I saw one of our clients the other day. You would have never guessed this guy. He went First thing he bought uh, was a cowboy hat. So he went from shorts and a T-shirt. Now he's wearing a hat. You'll see him walking around town. It is awesome. And he's loving the people. The people are loving him. And um, I'm telling you, it's just it's fantastic to see people move to a town where it's such a close-knit area. So, anyways, hope you guys stay safe. Hopefully, uh, this town is going to be reopening here by our next podcast next week. But either way, we will be on the air again. Again, thank you. I'm Jason Grandin with the Grandin Group. Send me your questions, comments, whatever you need, and we'll get you taken care of. You guys have a spectacular day. Be safe. Jason Grandin with the Grandin Group.